Let's watch a short video by the World Health Organization about healthcare associated infection and why we must be vigilant and informed about it. Healthcare associated infections. These are the type of infections that are not incubating or apparent in the patient's admission. It can result in an increase of hospital costs, a prolonged recovery time, disability, and even death. But according to research, 25% of healthcare associated infections are preventable. Healthcare associated infections are still prevalent around the world and this is due to several factors including the following 1. Poor compliance of healthcare workers with standard infection control practices 2. Risky behavioral practices of patients and visitors in the healthcare setting 3. Poor understanding and implementation of infection prevention and control programs in healthcare and 4. The lack of program coherence when it exists with other public health services and interventions. Now let's talk about the four types of healthcare associated infections, right? Number one, we have surgical site infections. Number two, we have catheter associated urinary tract infections. Number three, we have bloodstream infections. And number four, pneumonia. Surgical site infections are common in hospital areas where in a diagnosis or a treatment of a patient might undergo surgery. There are certain features that we must take into consideration as healthcare professionals to avoid surgical site infections. 
One of those is the administration of antimicrobial agents for prophylaxis for a particular procedure or disease according to the methods cited in scientific literature. Another thing would be hair removal if necessary. Catheter-associated urinary tract infection. These are common healthcare-associated infections because most of our patients could be with an indwelling catheter. There are some things that we can take into consideration to avoid CAUTI. One of those is making an estab or establishing evidence-based guidelines for limiting use and duration of indwelling urinary catheters, performing hand hygiene prior to catheter insertion or maintenance care, using aseptic technique for site preparation, equipment and supplies, securing catheters for unobstructed urine flow and drainage, maintaining the sterility of the urine collection system, replacing the urine collection system when required, and collecting urine samples. Selecting measures using evidence-based guidelines or best practices are well known to eliminate our catheter-associated urinary tract infections. Bloodstream infections, or also known as central line-associated bloodstream infections, are one of the hazards that we have as healthcare-associated infections. Now, most of our patients might have indwelling long-term central venous catheters and or even peripherally inserted central catheter lines. Now, there are different elements or key performance that can avoid this type of infections in the hospital. One of those is educating the staff and licensed independent practitioners who are involved in managing central lines and central line associated bloodstream infections. Prior to insertion, we have to educate the patients and their families as well, implement policies and practices aimed at reducing the risk of central line associated infections, conduct periodic risk assessment for central line associated bloodstream infections, provide central associated bloodstream infections, data prevention and outcome measures to key stakeholders, use a catheter checklist, use a standardized supply cart and kit that contains all necessary components, perform hand hygiene prior to catheter insertion, use maximum sterile barrier precautions during central venous catheter insertion, use alcoholic chlorhexidine antiseptic for skin preparations during central venous catheter insertion, and the use of standardized protocol to disinfect catheter hubs and injection ports before accessing the ports. Pneumonia is one of the most common types of infections that we can see in patients who are hospitalized for quite some time. One of the reasons why they are having this type of infections is being immobile or bedridden. As healthcare providers, there are certain measures that we can do to avoid our patients having this type of infections. One of those is making sure we turn them from side to side, hydrate our patients better, refer them to chest physiotherapies, and rehabilitation. Healthcare associated infections can be caused by three ways. First off, exogenous. Exogenous are infections that are acquired from the hospital environment. Second, endogenous. Endogenous infections are acquired by microorganisms that the client already carries. And number three is latrogenic. Latrogenic is infection acquired from the direct result of a treatment or a procedure. There are different risk factors that may increase the incidence of healthcare associated infections, and these are the following. Inadequate hand hygiene by the caregiver. A compromised host. Poor medical and surgical aseptic techniques. Presence of invasive devices. Skin breakdown. Impaired circulation. And aging. Healthcare associated infection is not something we should take lightly. Let's go ahead to the next lecture and talk about the chain of infection.